The Sony RX10 IV is a good choice for shooting video, but without a screen that swivels forward, it's not great for vlogging. There are a lot of settings and options. Now here are my suggestions to get good results with a minimum of fuss. Give me three minutes to get you started, and then I'll share a few advanced tips at the end. Use an SDXC memory card, rated U3 or better. Press the silver movie button to record video from any setting on the mode dial. But use the mode dial's video setting. That changes the display to video 16x9 aspect, displays audio meters, and adjusts other settings for video. For example, while shooting video, only manual and continuous autofocus are available. I'm starting with the camera in its default settings. If you wish to do a reset, use Setup Screen 6, select Initialize. The video settings are on Tab 2, Screen 1. For Exposure Mode, select Manual Exposure. That provides full control of the settings. And then set the file format. Use one of the XAVCS modes, HD or 4K. 4K is the 16x9 video aspect ratio. There's no setting for the 4K cinema aspect. Even down-resed, 4K looks better than HD and offers the ability to zoom and pan when outputting to HD. I recommend 4K unless you're limited by memory cards, computer editing power, or space. Then, record setting. For a video look, 30 frames 100. For a cinematic feel, 24 frames 100. This video was recorded and output at HD 30 frames for technical reasons, so I can demonstrate the screens. 100 refers to the data rate. Using 60 reduces quality slightly, but doesn't eat up card space as quickly. For all the data in a 4K image, 100 megabits already feels like a compromise, so I never use 60, and memory cards are cheap. With manual mode, aperture and shutter are manually adjusted, but I go back to tab 1, screen 7, and use auto ISO until I want to fully control the image. Set the minimum to 100, max to 6400. Then set the metering mode. In general, multi provides a good overall exposure, but for specific situations, center might help a centered subject that's either brighter or darker than the rest of the scene. And this is new on the RX10 IV, Highlight, a great solution for performers on stage, or just to keep highlights from blowing out. Assuming you're shooting people, tab on screen 14 to turn face detection on. Set the focus switch to any position but manual. All the others provide continuous focus. Press the fun button to confirm autofocus continuous mode and select the autofocus area. Wide works for most scenes. The RX10 IV has a touch screen. Just tap to focus on an object or to change focus to another. This is nice. It's worth noting that this doesn't work when an external monitor is connected and that when focus is achieved, the mode changes to manual. Set the white balance to the appropriate setting, never auto, which will make subtle shifts while you shoot, making editing difficult. Using the back control wheel, set the shutter speed to 1 60th for dark interiors 1 30th or any setting in between. Use the lens's aperture ring to select f4. f4 or smaller keeps the backgrounds defocused, but also makes for a very narrow depth of field. Use a smaller aperture, f11 or f16, to have a sharper in-focus background. For a softer background, back up and zoom in. But keep the subject as close to the lens as possible. If you're shooting outside and it's too bright, you'll see the auto ISO flash. Turn the aperture ring until it stops. Now, if that doesn't work, or if you want to keep the shallower depth of field, you'll need a 72mm ND filter. Now, the scene is properly exposed, but if you want it brighter or darker, turn the EV dial or set the ISO manually. Now finally, select a creative style. These are personal taste, so choose the one that pleases you. I use neutral and turn all three settings down slightly for a softer look. If you're shooting outside and recording HD, tab 5 screen 1 to turn monitor brightness to sunny weather. This doesn't work in 4K. And now, you're ready to record. Those settings will provide the maximum return for minimal effort. Now, if you can spare a few more minutes, I'll provide some advanced tips. Here's what I do beyond what I just described. 
I prefer to use a custom white balance. Use the Fun menu to select White Balance and scroll to Set while pointed at a white sheet of paper or Pro 18% gray card. Save it. There are three registers, but I just overwrite one. The next step to improving your video production is audio. The onboard mics are fine for background ambience. Improve the sound using an external mic. There are lots to choose from. I use a Rodelink Filmmaker wireless kit, but this is YouTube's Sony system. Turn the levels down. Otherwise, you'll end up with overly compressed audio. And use headphones to monitor what you're recording, particularly important with a wireless system. Picture profiles on Tab 1 Screen 10 are not an essential adjustment, but you may find the results with 3 and 4 to be best for TV viewing, while 5 and 6 are designed to simulate cinema exposure and colors. Whichever you choose, again, I find turning the saturation down to minus 2 and detail to minus 4 to provide a slightly softer, more pleasant image. That's my taste. You may wish to use the extensive selection of settings here to create the look that pleases you. If you are setting the ISO manually, by default, the C1 button is the shortcut to ISO, and you can eyeball exposure, you can use the meter MM at the bottom of the screen, you can press DISP and check with the histogram. Now, unfortunately, neither of these stay on screen while you're setting the ISO. So you can use the Zebra for a more accurate setting. On Tab 2 Screen 7, set Zebra to 100. Now, this alerts me to any area in the image that's overexposed. Now, if that results in an underexposed image, an inexpensive on-camera LED light can help. And the reason not to use the Auto ISO is that as it's continually making adjustments, the resulting changes in the footage may be distracting and harder to edit. Set the ISO manually by turning it up or down until the zebra stripes are eliminated or minimized. Judgment call. Marker settings on Tab 2 Screen 4 80% safety zone helps to remind you to keep your primary subject within this area. Turn the marker on or off with the menu, but this can also be assigned to a custom button. By the way, on a tripod, turn the video steady shot on tab 3 off. For black and white footage, turn the picture profiles off and select it from the creative style menu. A few final tips. Shooting handheld, use the viewfinder. It makes the shot steadier. Use Tab 2 Screen 10 to turn the beeping sounds off. Although, I like the confirmation that recording has started and ended. You may also find it helpful to select your most frequently used settings and create a My Menu. Battery life is short but can be extended using an external USB battery. I find this adds about 50%. Now, thanks for watching, and don't go home until you have an empty battery and a full memory card. If you're in a clicking mood, likes, comments, and questions below, I do read and reply to relevant questions and civil comments. If you've got one more click, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe.